Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job, your one-stop shop when it comes to exploring career opportunities in New Zealand today. Now, do you like helping people and would you like to save lives? Because this week, we're bringing you a special program looking at a number of different careers with the New Zealand Fire Service. In today's show, India Leishman takes a look at the role of a fire risk management officer and community educator. Then Max Armstrong spends some time learning about the role of a fire investigator. And finally, in today's program, I get to wear the red helmet as a rookie firefighter as I'm keen to check out the work of a volunteer firefighter. So let's get the ball rolling and join India, who's busy checking out the roles of a fire risk management officer and community educator. Hi, I'm Indy Leishman. I'm Year 12, and I'm interested in fire safety education as a career. So Wendy is going to spend a couple of days with Fire Risk Management Officer George Stevens and his colleagues so she can find out more. We've got a busy day. Let's go. Right. Fire safety education is just a part of fire risk management. A fire risk management officer is an important role within the New Zealand Fire Service. The role entails not only fire safety education, but carrying out safety checks on buildings and investigating the sources of fires as well. First stop for India and George is to visit a home for a fire safety check. The idea is to do a fire safety check and at the same time check out your smoke alarms. Yes. This smoke alarm is no good anymore. It's old yeah. and they don't last forever. What we'll do is we're going to replace that smoke alarm. <laughs> and last thing we do is... Yes. Yes. With the alarm replaced, tested and working, George now completes the fire safety check around Maureen's home. We don't generally like to see candles in bedrooms, but when you have your candles, make sure you keep them clear from curtains so the curtains don't come over them and, and catch on fire. We'll have a look in here. You haven't got a build-up of cooking fat or anything yeah. like that, which is so easy to do. Yes. We recommend every time you use the dryer, clean the lint. Fire risk management is a major emphasis of the fire service today, which has a direct effect of saving lives, including that of Bob's, whose house caught fire in the middle of the night. I hit the fire alarm and I got up. My room was full of smoke. And I think the smoke alarm, that saved my life. The next job of the day is to visit a school in East Auckland where George's colleague Matt Evans is presenting the Get Firewise program. So Matt, what exactly is the Get Firewise program? It's a program designed by the fire service to be worked with in schools where teachers work with the students, students go home and work with their families and parents, and when the schools are ready and they request it, we come in as the fire service and we round off with the presentation. And that's what I'm doing today. And we have a very special guest here. This is Indy. Say good morning to Indy. Good morning, Indy. We make sure that children know that they're trying to keep themselves safe. That's what they've been needing to do. Your job is to get down, down get, get low, get out the next thing is we talk about not having fires. So we talk to them about matches and lighters being tools, not toys. What do you want me to do with this? Where should I put it? Up high. Somewhere up high? Mm. OK, cool. We'll put that away. OK, well done. Give Ashley a big clap, everyone. We also talk about safe use of candles, and I ask them to be little detectives in their own home to make sure that adults who use these use them correctly. Can I walk safely through the house like that? No, that's right. The other thing is we need to know there's a fire and so we talk about smoke alarms and how smoke alarms save lives. <laughs> Will that wake you up? Yeah. Will you wake me up too? We finish off and we have a pretend smoke and we hold that down as a smoke and the children get down, get low, get out fast, shout fire, fire, fire and go to their safe meeting place. Well done. Well done. Indy and George's next appointment is at a centre where George is to address a group of Alzheimer's support workers. It's all about building and developing a fire safety partnership program with the group. If you've only got one smoke alarm, it goes between the kitchen and the sleeping area. So Carol, how important is it that you have people like George coming in to talk to you guys? It's absolutely invaluable. We um, look after very vulnerable older people yeah. and services like George has just talked to us about. We need to know about those. Back on the road to South Auckland and it's hands-on time for Indy as she helps George's colleague Phil Fadley with a commercial fire safety inspection. Oh, good morning. Good morning, I'm Phil Fadley from the Fire Service and this is Indy. Hi, Hi Andy. nice to meet you. Good. So we're looking at the exit signage, making sure it's adequate. Okay. We're looking at the signage for the fire extinguisher. And while we're here, we test the maintenance record as well. 
And Rob, that fire exit sign probably needs to be clearer. Definitely, yes. All right. What are those detectors for? Do we have to check those? Those are thermal detectors for the alarm system, and we check to make sure that there's no obvious defects, and then we just go and look at the alarm panel to make sure that that's operating properly. Okay, cool. And the last check we'll check is the firefighting hose reel. Yep. Great. And that works good. Working well. Well done, Rob. Your building has passed the building fire safety survey. Great Thank job. You very much. Well done. Thank you, Indy. That's all right. Thanks very much, Rob. I've seen the many areas of fire risk management. I've seen the community education area. I've seen the management itself. I've seen a fire assessment on the house, on residential and commercial. And it's been really, really cool, and I've really enjoyed it. And I think it would be a great career to pursue. To become a fire risk management officer, you will need good life experience. Preferable, you need to be aged over 24 years. You should have some experience of firefighting, either as a volunteer or career firefighter. You should be fit and strong, as well as mentally tough, and be able to interact well with people from all walks of life. Fire safety training and qualifications can be gained on the job. Now, after the break, we join Max Armstrong as he discovers what's involved in becoming a fire investigator. Welcome back to Just The Job. This is our fire service special program. And coming up next, Max Armstrong from King's College explores the career opportunities as a fire investigator. So Max is going to spend the day with senior specialist fire investigator, Todd O'Donoghue. Sweet ass. So uh, what we'll do, Max, is we'll head up and I've got a, an introduction to fire investigation. It's a computer training package. And it'll show you the sorts of things we need to look at if we get called to a real job today. Oh, that's great. The fire service has a directive to investigate and report on the causes of all fires in New Zealand. Peter Wilding is the national manager for fire investigation and arson reduction. It's the role of the officer of the fire engine to determine the cause of the fire. If it's a very large fire, a complex fire, or if it's a fire of significance, then we would call in a specialist fire investigator working in the fire service. The first task for Max is to learn some basics about fire investigation. So Todd puts him to work with an ingenious interactive fire investigation computer program. What sort of things do you think could have started the fire on the bed there? Well, there's a hairdryer here. So that could have started it, and I also see some uh, cords going up into the bed, so maybe there's an electric blanket. Yep. However, there's a suitcase here that seems quite burnt, so it might be that. Good work. Oh, hey, um, actually, there goes my pager, actually. Hey, look, we've got a house fire that uh, we could go and have a look at, so um, there's a real job we can go and see. I think for a start, we'll uh, take my notepad so we can take a few notes. Just my little brush and shovel and my uh, general toolbox. So grab those overalls, um, I'll also grab you a helmet and we'll grab a torch and stuff and we'll head on in and have a look. Looks like in here is the area where there's the worst burning. So that normally indicates that that's where the fire started. So we'll, we'll go in and see what sort of patterns we can see. Often we look for V patterns and things and even though a lot of the wall boards have gone we can look at those char patterns on the timber. We'll look on door frames and bits of furnishing. If they're more charred on one side but not the other, it shows us the fire's gone the way in that direction sort of thing. If I feel down there, I feel that the charring's not quite as deep. Yep. OK, so we know that the fire has come across this way and, and charred the couch as it's come across. So we'll head that back that way, um, looking for the cause of the fire. Todd and Max's detective work shows that the fire started near the couch and Todd suspects an accelerant might have been used to start the fire. Todd's comprehensive toolkit includes a detector that can sniff it out. You can see that's really starting to come up there into the, it started off counting in parts per billion, but there's so much of something down there, it's now parts per million. We got up to almost 100 parts per million there, so that would be a good area if we get the police here for them to take a sample from and, and test it a bit. Once the fire scene has been fully examined by Todd and Max, the relevant areas of interest are photographed and details written down for future reference. As this fire is suspicious, Todd is called in the police. Hey Todd, Bill Maddox, so police suck, eh? Constable Bill Maddox is a scene of crime officer. I'll get Max to lead you in and show you where he found something, yep. eh? Sounds good. Okay, this way. Cheers, Max. Sample integrity is paramount when collecting forensic evidence. Bill's evidence collecting kit includes sterile plastic bags into which the samples from the fire are deposited. The bags are securely closed and labelled and then placed into sealed tins, which are numbered and signed by Bill, which then go for analysis to the forensic laboratory. A fascinating part of Todd's work is to recreate fire situations 
so that he can understand how a fire started and be able to stop it happening again. The fire service have their own testing facility in a remote location just outside Auckland. What we're going to do today is I've got these photos of, a, of an accident that happened uh, in a boat out in the harbour actually where this family were using a portable gas cooker and it exploded on them. And uh, as you can see, all the family that were on the boat suffered quite bad burn Ouch. injuries. Yeah, yeah, quite painful. And it's not the only time that this has happened. It's happened a few times throughout the country. So what we're wanting to do is recreate it and, and see if we can work out what's going on. I have, I've got one down here that, that uh, exploded uh, further down in, in Central Island, actually. And as you can see, um, there's the gas can canister that was in it. The whole end is blown out of the gas canister. And it's quite badly disfigured the cooker. Now we think part of the problem could be that, you know, they're supposed to be used with, with that's called the trivet up that way with a, only a certain size pot on it. We yep. think some people are using a pot that's too big and even in some cases they're able to light it with the trivet upside down so we think it's getting too hot inside. So should we go inside and have a look at what we've set up in there? Yep. We've um, set up some mannequins here as if they're a family sitting around a gas cooker. We've set up all these little cameras so that from the safety of that control container we can watch what's going on and record what's happening. Well, Max, let's have a look what's happened in here. As you can see, quite a bit of carnage. Not the big explosion we were expecting, but um, you can imagine the force of that would have actually done some damage if these were real people. After a fascinating morning and an explosive afternoon, it's the end of Max's day with Todd. Is it just the job for him? It's been a very interesting day. Uh, I learned a lot about the fire service. It's not just driving around big red trucks putting out fires. Uh, Todd showed me a lot and did a great job and I might be interested in uh, taking up this job later on in my life. Well, it's been a busy day, but uh, Max did really well. Uh, asked a lot of inquisitive questions, had a logical mind. I hope this is the sort of career that he may choose to consider in the future. To become a fire investigator, you will need to be inquisitive, logical thinker, but open to all options. Good life experience is a bonus. You'll need to be a good communicator as you'll be working with other professional organisations and often you'll be working with people who are traumatised. Most fire investigating training takes place within the fire service and having firefighting experience is highly desirable. And we've got plenty more information about fire service careers on our website. I'll be giving you those details a little later on in the program, so stick around. After the break, I'm going to discover, that's right, I'm going to check out what it takes to become a volunteer firefighter when I team up with these guys for a couple of days. In New Zealand today, there are over 8,000 volunteer firefighters covering 80% of our country. I've always wanted to be a volunteer firefighter, so come with me. I'm going to check it out. Ah. G'day. G'day. Clinton, is it? Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Andrew Beatty. I'm oh, the Chief to... Fire Officer. Nice um, to meet you. Are you looking at joining Kimu Station? Indeed. OK, come on through to the watch room and we'll have a chat. Ready. Volunteer fire brigades like this one at Kimu are an integral part of the community. Volunteer firefighters not only put out fires and carry out rescues, but get involved in many community projects as well. So Andrew, for people who potentially want to get into the fire service as a volunteer like myself, what's the procedure? What do you have to do? Firstly, I need to know that you live within five kilometres of the station. The second thing is I need to know that um, you're committed to, to being able to turn up. Mm -hmm. um, I need to know, for instance, when we do put an application into you, that you don't have a criminal record because you won't get into the fire service. And I need to see how you basically get on with the other guys and handle it for a few weeks. So, Andrew, do you think I could have a look around and see, see no what it's all about? All. Um, I'll pass you on to our training officer, Simon Shields, and he'll show you what it means to be a volunteer firefighter. Sounds good. Right, because we might get a call today at any time, we'll kick you out in the right sort of gear. Got your firefighter gum boots, steel cap, and they have a steel line in the bottom of them. A level one jacket, which you can wear for minor scrub fires and car accidents. Flash hood to protect your ears in a house fire. Level two pants and a level two jacket. Red helmet is standard for rookies. And this way, no one's going to mistake me for someone who actually knows what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. Initial firefighter training takes about six months, which involves observing and helping out as a rookie at the station. Then I'd have to complete a seven-day firefighter training course in Rotorua, after which I'd become a qualified volunteer firefighter. Kitted out and looking the part, Simon showed me around the rescue tender, which I'll be working with today. And it's like we've got all our rescue gear, which is the, the jaws of life. Hose reel for, uh, to start off with house fires, and then down here we've got the larger hose. 
So around here is the pump panel. The driver is the pump operator as well, so he not only drives the truck but also operates the pump for the water. So this is one of the most important pieces of gear we carry on the truck. It's BA or breathing apparatus. It's used when uh, there's toxic chemicals or smoke from a house fire that we don't want to breathe in. A bit like going for a dive. Put your flashlight on over the top, stop the ears getting burnt. And then when you're doing this, your partner's checking you to make sure everything's right. So now you've got your breathing apparatus or BA on, the first thing we'll get you to do is run a hose reel off the truck. Alright. The next thing we're going to do is get the roll at a uh, 70 mil instantaneous hose. Stand on the hose, get it rolling, roll it in. Keep your hands up as high as you can. Your one's not very straight, by the way. I'll stand on it for you, eh? Okay. Might I just add, I'm carrying a lot more weight than he is at the moment. Only on your back. Okay. See you later. After my BA training, it was time to team up with the Greenwatch lads and lasses of the Cumu Volunteer Brigade who come from all walks of life. I'm Warren Marshall. I'm a tarmac coordinator out at Auckland International Airport. I'm Mike Hutchins. I'm a parts manager out in Penrose. I'm Carl Canham and I'm a uh, transformer design engineer. I'm Mike Boston and I'm a police officer at Helensville. I'm Amy Murray and I'm a student nurse. My first Greenwatch team task was a ladder exercise. Yeah. Being the middle of the Rugby World Cup, this was a very important task. I had to change the station flag. So all we need to do is go up the ladder, listen to the instructions from the guys, change the fire service flag for the All Blacks flag. The commitment to be a volunteer fireman, you either do it properly or you don't bother. And doing it properly means that you will get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, even though you've got work at 8 o'clock that same day. You will come to training for probably at least 90% of Mondays through the year to do the training. You will do courses that come up. You'll be available to do promotional stuff as well, smoke alarms and those sort of things, and, and fire awareness. It's all part of our job these days. Thank you, boys. There, real man's hands. Rescue and firefighting skills are constantly being honed by training exercises, and today is no exception. The exercise is to a car crash. Cumu volunteers attend about 300 calls per year, and 18% of these are for road accidents. One of the youngest Cumu firefighters is Amy Murray. The first call that I went to was a fatal car accident. I went to three in my first week. My dad was actually a firefighter, so I've kind of grown up on the station. Just something that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, it takes its toll, but there's heaps of support to like work through it. Teamwork and family support is paramount in the force, as the work can be stressful, especially at accidents like this one. Cumu Volunteer Brigade recognises this by organising regular family get-togethers at the station. Social side's really important for us because for, for two reasons. Firstly, the guys give their own time, so they need to be able to unwind, and, and it's part of feeling part of the brigade as well. But also, they couldn't survive without the support of their wives and partners. Because if the wife or partner doesn't agree with the husband getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. we're in trouble and we don't have that person. 17-year-old twins Andrew and Michael are Cumu's latest recruits. He went on his first call, actually, just yesterday. Um, I haven't gone on my first call yet. Yeah, it was quite exciting. I was just sitting at home and I kind of freaked out a little. I was like, oh, do I go? Just go for it. And I just came down here and managed to just, just get on the truck. And What was the call out for? I was a scrub fire, trees on fire just down the road. So A what? A trees on fire just down oh, the trees, road. Oh, trees, so. trees on fire. Yeah. What's someone overcooking the hamburgers or something? <laughs> trees on fire. So you put it out all right, not too many problems? Nah, it was sweet ass. Part of the community and education work the volunteers take part in is helping out with the Right Track program. The attendees have been referred to the program by the courts, and John is the Right Track course organiser. I suppose one would describe it as a rehabilitative program for young people aged between 15 and 25 who have been apprehended for doing something exceedingly stupid in a vehicle. Tonight, the Cumu volunteer firefighters show the attendees what the results of their actions might have been how there is a good chance that the rescue teams that come to their rescue will be volunteers. And they show them the skills required to free drivers and passengers in a crash. And if things do go wrong, how quickly a fatal car fire can spread. So, is the program a success? Over 80% of our kids have never offended again. 
once they've attended the program. My day with the Kimu volunteers is over. So, how did I do? I think Clinton did really well today. He was quick and eager to learn, and I sincerely hope he joins the volunteer brigade in the fire service. Man, it was so much fun. I had an absolute blast. Look what we did to that car. Oh, it was like sirens, adrenaline, and the gear, the work. I didn't even get to put out a fire, and I absolutely loved it. So if you're sitting at home, you're thinking about joining the fire service, stop thinking about it, get here, and get yourself enrolled. To become a volunteer firefighter, you need to be fit, be a team player, and be willing to be called upon when required. All basic training takes place at your local volunteer fire station, supplemented by a week's training at the fire training headquarters in Rotorua. Once qualified, you can progress to senior firefighter and on to becoming an officer. Although unpaid, the work is very rewarding with many of the skills you learn being able to transfer into your normal work life. Thanks Clint, you did really well. Thanks oh. for coming out and seeing us today. Thank um, you very much. Hope you had a bit of fun and uh, here's the memento of your day with Kumi Fire, Fire Brigade. Oh, I appreciate that, thank you. Well, there's definitely more to becoming a volunteer firefighter than I thought, but you've got a great team here at Kumi and make you proud. I think we've got a great team too, so thank you again. Awesome. Hey, there are so many exciting career options out there that the choice can be difficult. So to help you, here's Sarah from Careers New Zealand up next with some excellent advice on finding the right job for you. You can find out about jobs in heaps of different ways. Websites, friends and family, talking to people who are actually doing the job, or better still, giving it a go yourself. But the real challenge is to know your personality, skills and talents and figure out how the job matches with who you are. Careers.govt.nz has great job matching tools that help you to see the connections between your favourite school subjects, skills you'd like to use, and jobs or industries that could be right for you. Well, I'll be on that calendar in no time, I think. Join us next week for another special programme when we look at how to get your dream job. And to find out more about any of the careers we looked at this week and heaps of other information about making that right career choice, jump on our program website, tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. So best of luck, and I'll see you again next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.